Hi everyone, Bacha here from RecordingStudio9.com and thanks for joining me again today. And today I'm going to try to demonstrate and give you a basic example of what mixer audio chain inserts are. We find them in uh, live mixers, recording mixers, as well as some audio interfaces. An example would be my M-Audio Fast Track Ultra, which has some microphones at the front and some in, at the back as well and some outputs but we find that it has two inserts we're going to talk about what they are and how they actually work and how they actually affect your uh, mic or line input and to demonstrate this I'm going to use my Behringer FCA 1616 Firepower audio interface because it has onboard eight analog inputs and eight analog outputs as well as eight inserts which is a fantastic gear for the price you won't find it um, in this sort of uh, level of audio interfaces I'm gonna demonstrate what the inserts are and how we can actually use them so before that let's have a look at some of my hand drawing and discuss what an insert is Let's have a quick look of how the audio routing of an audio interface works. We have our microphone that feeds into the preamplifier of the audio interface and that signal gets amplified and then fed into our analog to digital converter and the output from the USB or Firewire gets sent to the PC so you can record the digital signal into your DAW and then the playback from your DAW signal data comes back and gets converted from digital back to analog and then sent out to the outputs and then to your headphones and or your speakers now to be able to use an external gear um, if your audio interface has insert option basically what it means that this whenever you plug in your cable at the back of the unit it disconnects the signal between your preamplifier and the analog to digital converter and then that signal gets sent out to your outboard gear and then the output of your effects it could be compressor it could be equalizer or it could be reverb or any of those effects and the output is then routed back to the input of the analog to digital converter and that's basically it so the signal from the microphone will come in, gets amplified, fed into your effects, and the output of the effects come back, gets converted to digital, into your DAW, and back again, and so on. So, one thing to remember, if you plug something into your audio interface's insert cable, and not have any effects turned on or plugged in, that signal chain is broken, and you won't be able to hear any sound. So there's something to watch out for. Now the cable that we need at the back of the, of the audio interface, uh, the insert socket, um, is a cable called insert patch lead. And the insert patch lead basically looks like this. It has a TRS, like a stereo headphone plug, on one end. And then on the other end, it splits into two tip and sleeve, TS cables. And one of them gets connected to the tip and the sleeve and the other one gets connected to the ring and the sleeve and what happens with the signal is that the output from your audio interface at the insert section gets fed to the tip which comes out of here into your effects unit and then back from the effects unit comes back out onto the ring of the actual plug so that's the signal it makes if you're not sure what sort of cable to get if you go to your music shop and ask for an insert cable and show them a picture of this they should be able to guide you because there are some cables which may look very similar to this but they may not be an insert cable something to watch out for so let's have a look and I'll show you how to plug this into our FCA 1616 and my 
uh, McKay squeeze compressor and we're just going to use one of the compressor channels. So at the back of the FCA 1616 we find when it's marked insert an instruction is also given here saying that send is the tip, return is the ring and the sleeve is the sleeve uh, which is the negative ground. So that's what we need to plug in there. We find the insert one for microphone that's channel one, channel two, channel three, four, five and respectively so and what we're going to do is just plug that in there. Now that actually, because I don't have anything plugged in here, that has already broken the signal from the microphone input to the digital converter inside. Now, the other end of the cables, we need to plug it into our uh, effects unit. Um, I know the red is the tip and yellow is the ring. And if you're not sure, you should check out your uh, cabling connection, making sure that you connect the, the, the uh, tip and the ring correctly. Now the tip is the output from our audio interface. That means we plug it in to the input of our effects. And then the return is the yellow, which is the output from our effects unit. And we plug it in there as well. And that's now completes the connection coming out to the input of our effects and then and coming out from our effects unit going back into our insert. So I'm going to flip this over and we're going to have a quick look. Okay, so to demonstrate this, let us plug in a microphone. So I've got my XLR connector and my microphone. I'm just going to plug it in there and turn the volume up volume up and um, I'm not getting any signal and guess what that's only because my effects is not turned on so that demonstrates how the effects uh, insert is actually broken the connection let's just unplug our insert so now we don't have any insert plugged in now we should be here we go now that I can talk we can actually get a signal now coming through um, on input one and it's going out left and right on the output. So as you can see, by plugging it in, the insert, we break the connection until we turn the effects on. Now that I have the effects on and in cable insert plugged in, we have a signal because the signal is just going straight through our effects. Just to demonstrate that the effect is in line, we can see some lights. So I'm just going to turn the compressor's um, ratio five, 5 to 1. And let's see what else we can turn it on. Oh, here we go. We're actually already getting some gain reduction there, 1 or 2 dBs. I'm just going to play with my threshold so that we can get more um, gain reduction. Now I know you cannot hear it because I have the video camera's microphone connected and we've got nothing connected. So um, now that we can actually see how it actually works, how the signal is now coming to the effects and returning back, and we can see that from the output, I'm going to plug the output of the Behringer FCA 1616 into the camera and you'll be able to hear me whatever I'm talking on the microphone. And then as I play around with the settings of the compressor, you should be able to hear the difference. Okay, now that I have the microphone connected to uh, the camera, so the output of the audio interface, I have a cable right there. You can see this cable that's connected to the back of the camera. And you, what you hear from the microphone is, as you can see, a further I take. So it's just proving that it is the microphone uh, that I'm talking to and you're listening to. So let's turn our uh, effects unit. One of the good things is it actually, this compressor has a gate. So we are able to turn our gate on. And then we should be able to see a light comes on. That means the gate is active. That means it's cutting the signal completely if there's no loud audio signal coming in.
as you can hear and see, see you can't even hear me there. So I turn the gate off. You can hear. Now let's turn the gate on. We can even turn it even uh, higher. No, it won't pick up anything unless my voice goes beyond the threshold level and the gate opens up. So that way we get a nice and clean signal. So if the vocalist is not singing or if uh, whatever instrument's playing, they're not playing, it actually uh, cuts it off so you get nice clean signal coming through, which you can't do unless you've got... Um, a gate. So ne next, let's play around with our uh, compressor. Let's turn it on. Um, um, let's increase the ratio from z 1 to 1, maybe to 2.5 to 1. We are getting only very little uh, 1 dB reduction. So I'm just going to uh, down the threshold a bit further. Now we're getting about 3 or 4 dB reduction. So my voice will be getting lower. Let's increase the ratio again, 5 to 1. So now the signal, you know, reducing down to 6 dB reduction. And we can uh, adjust the threshold as well, so even more reduction. So I can scream, but my signal will not distort because it will reduce before it gets converted to digital signal. So the signal is, won't be clipping. I could be shouting! but the signal still did not clip. And of course, we can adjust all the settings as well. So uh, now that we're getting um, ab average about 6 dB of reduction, we can g increase the output to 6 dB to bring the level back out to whatever before compression was. Of course, because I've got my attack at the minimum and release at uh, the minimum level, Let's increase that. Normally for vocals, we probably need about 40 milliseconds to give a nice, um, so it doesn't cut off all the first transients. So we get nice uh, S's. And for release, probably about, again, um, half a second or thereabouts will be fine. So, um, and then, well, this unit has an air. And by increasing the air, we actually um, bring out some of the transients back into the signal so the S's don't disappear. So that's at the maximum level of S, 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 S. As you can hear now, the S's disappear. Um, so if you've got a lot of civilians, you can turn it down. Or if you don't have any, then uh, you can definitely turn it up. and gives you uh, back. I hardly ever use the auto setting for compressors. I like manual. So anyway... That describes what we can do with um, any insert on our audio interfaces or our mixers. So we can insert an effects unit or chain of effects unit um, into our signal uh, before they get converted into digital signal to be sent to our uh, computers. Well, I hope now you know what the insert socket at the back of your mixer or, or your interface that you have, which you never know what to do with it. Uh, now you know uh, how it works and what you can do. As you can see, it's a really great way to introduce uh, outboard gear compressors before it gets converted so that if you do get loud sound, um, instead of getting digital clipping, which is really horrible sounding, you can tame it down with a compressor and then you get a nice clean signal. So even as a limiter, it works really great as well. So if this was helpful, make sure you give me the thumbs up. And if you have any comments regarding how to set up inserts and things you're not sure of, please do comment be uh, below and I'm more than happy to answer them for you. And I hope you also subscribe, subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel and visit my website as well, recordingstudio9.com. And I hope to see you next time. Cheerio.